We live in a connected world where people, places, organizations, and governments around the globe interact on a daily basis. In human geography, we seek to better understand these different spatial relationships to gain insight into the world in which we live. One way we can do this is by understanding the five themes of geography. The five themes of geography consists of movement, regions, human environment, interaction, location, and place. Understanding these five themes allows us to understand the world around us. Movement is the mobility of people, goods, and ideas across different places. Understanding movement allows us to see different patterns and processes of migration, trade, transportation, and communication. When talking about movement, we are not talking about you exercising or walking around in your house. We are talking about the connections between different places and how those connections influence and shape each place. For instance, we can observe the movement of people from their homes to the office, which not only leads to the exchange of ideas at the workplace, but also impacts the surrounding economy. Workers driving into work often stop at gas stations on the way to work or go out to eat at a restaurant near the office for lunch, all of which ends up supporting the local economy and creates new jobs and opportunities for other people in the area. Even this video is an example of movement. As I explain the different themes of geography, you are listening to the video and taking in the information. Here we have the movement of ideas. The next theme is region. In geography, we look for different patterns and characteristics of places. When we notice areas that are defined by one or more unique characteristics or defined by certain patterns of activities, we call them a region. Using regions allows us to reference multiple places at once without having to list every place inside the region. Regions can be broken up into three different categories, formal, functional, and perceptual. A formal region is a geographic area that has common attributes and is traditionally defined by economic, political, social, or environmental characteristics. Formal regions are not up for debate. These regions are often homogenous, have set boundaries, and the common characteristics that define them are clearly visible. For example, we could look at a physical formal region like the Himalayas. It is not up for debate where the mountain range is. Or we could look at political formal regions such as the different political states that make up the continent of Africa. Now, a functional region is a geographic area organized around a node or center point that is often based around specific economic activities, travel, or communication. We can see examples of functional regions created by restaurants like Jimmy John's, Herbert's and Gerbert's, or your local pizza place, all of which deliver food to a certain number of homes near their store. Each store has its own functional region, and as long as you live in that region, you can get food delivered. But if you live outside the region, you'll have to order from a different store. Or we could look at public transportation, such as subways, bus routes, airports, or ports, all of which are great examples of functional regions. The last type of region we have is a perceptual region, which is a geographic area that has no perfect definition. It only exists because of people's beliefs, feelings, and attitudes of the region. These regions are often in a person's mind, which makes it hard to have set boundaries that are set in stone. For example, which countries are part of the Middle East? If you were to ask your classmates in your class, I bet you would find some similar answers. But I would also bet that everyone would have different ideas for what countries are part of the Middle East. So we can see that regions can differ depending on the place or topic we are looking at. Now our next theme is human environment interaction which focuses on the relationships between humans and their environment. Here we examine how people adapt to, modify, and depend on their surroundings. For instance, human activities such as agriculture, manufacturing, urbanization, or general daily life impact and shape the environment. But this is not a one-way street. We also have to examine how the environment shapes and impacts people and society. For instance, how the climate and natural resources in a geographic area shape the design of buildings, human activities, or cultural practices in the area. We can look at the RLC as just one example of how the environment and society impact and influence one another. The RLC dried up during the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union diverted the rivers that flowed into the RLC to help with the irrigation of crops, which resulted in the majority of the sea disappearing. 
This destroyed the economies of the local fishing villages and turned the once prosperous sea into a desert. Here we can see how the environment and society impact and influence one another, and how sometimes the consequences can be negative. Up next is location, which refers to the specific position or coordinates of a place on the Earth's surface. Generally, when we are talking about location, we are talking about absolute or relative location. Absolute location is the exact spot where something is located. For example, the GPS coordinates of a place. Oftentimes, we use longitude and latitude to determine the absolute location of a place. Relative location, on the other hand, is a description of a location using the surrounding geographic features. For example, my house is near the water tower and the fire station. Understanding both absolute and relative location allows allows us to better understand the different characteristics, interactions, and spatial relationships of a place. Now, throughout this video, I have mentioned place. Place is the unique physical and human characteristics of a location. When thinking of physical characteristics, think of rivers, mountains, vegetation, or the climate. And when thinking of human characteristics, you want to think of religion, language, population, and demographic data in general. Physical and human characteristics together create a sense of place for a location. A sense of place is a strong feeling or perception people have of a place. For instance, when you return home from a long vacation, think of the feeling you have when entering your hometown. Due to the physical and human characteristics of your town, you have unique experiences that give that place meaning, creating a sense of place. Now, if you need help remembering the different themes of geography, just think of Mr. Help, which stands for movement, regions, human environment interaction, location, and place. All right, there you have it, the five themes of geography. Remember, if you found value in this video, consider subscribing and check out my ultimate review packet for more help with AP Human Geography. As always, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time online.